electronic age then and also the widespread use of hydraulics on machinery and when you look at machinery nowadays you consider just where they were and it's pretty hard to work that all out 50 odd years ago 60 years ago but um, certainly there were thousands all through this area and they made their camps and so history has been recorded where possible and established some of these camp sites but these little towns and when you drive through you wonder how people ever survive and live in these places but behind it all there's a very very strong community um, they, they work very much on sporting and recreation community uh, groups whether it be your bridge clubs and your, your book clubs to your service industries and your red cross and your church groups and you mentioned your sport there's a huge number of sporting clubs most of these towns have excellent sporting and recreation facilities more is a big enough town there's various machinery dealerships in the area a lot of parkland established and um, the one on the right is recognition of military days and campsites. This railway line is the one from Perth to Geraldton, the one we crossed earlier at Guildford. And then many of these towns create the local government authority on the left and murals and information and things like that just to try and get people to stop and hopefully go and buy something in the local shop. Out on the right, I mentioned the Moor of Floods, 99. Um, you can see the mural on the wall of that building. So that's what it was like. It's a bit hard to imagine today. But um, the Moor River, which is not the one we crossed over, just a little bit further up here, broke its banks and the town was in fact evacuated. community, the strength and character of all the people that uh, kept the town going and uh, people from Perth and surrounding areas, the farms, people living outside of the town were able to assist and uh, let's see. Look, sorry I'm looking at all these horses everything else they've obviously I think um, Pony Club and Over East have had a, a major major event than 1800, or about 1800 population. Must have been a major Jim Carner event over Easter because there was trucks went past with, there was about 40 toilets on the banks. So just through here, there's um, St. Joseph's School to the front left that was evacuated during the flooding. The Mora Hospital on the right is finally a big political issue. It's desperately needing upgrades and rebuilding. government have changed their comment or budgeting to include it in repair or renewal. So the Moor River here, this is the culprit that flooded. Well, even a trickle of water in it today. And then out on the top side or the north side and up to our far right here, there's a lot of new, new housing not mass housing, but homes being built. Yeah, 
Second time in 13 years I've had breakfast. Okay. Usually they wave you three. Ah, oh, I don't mind. That's fair enough. Ah, oh, they just so many accidents. People coming home, they're tired. And... So through here you get little old cottages up there at the top right. Some on the left you find every now and again. Um, little old fibro cottages. But of course, then you've got other new homes that have been built. But these areas just will continue to grow, there's no doubt. A place like Moore and Roundabout like that, they'll just plod on. But um, these areas will just continue to blossom. So Vandy's is actually a little bit limited. There's no more land being, no more land being released for housing. There is a town of Durian which is only just 24 kilometres north of here, and that's undergoing huge development. There's only 15 or nearly 2,000 population of a jury in now. It's only 24 kilometres north, and um, however, longer term, that'll go 30, 40,000. But here, it's, it's all protected water with the reef and rocks offshore. Even when there's uh, a large swell running, a storm, or uh, it's still protected or strong winds. So it's a shelter. It's a natural bay or natural harbour. And the reef and rocks prevent the, stop the winds from coming through. homes are just owned so by farmers um, from whether it be Dandarrick and more around about people from Perth just have a cottage here and so not a lot get put up for sale and then progressively they'll probably be upgraded because it would be well worth it now as, a, as an asset and the fact there's no new areas of land being opened up for housing here, so their blocks of land will increase in, in value. They got underground water right near the coast, water's um, very close. But quite a few of those little shrubs are flowering with yellow vines. I'll just set flower and a few years on, I'll just finish. Just on the right, um, really white shandines, although they're not so white today. And that's only simply because of the light, but also a little bit of rain. There must have been a shower of rain yesterday. But if, if the wind was blowing, they'd be as white as white as you can ever find. So it's just your different colours and some moisture just on the surface.
So those that don't want to walk too far, you can either just walk up here and come back. That's one of our other drivers, although he's in a white shirt today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's the one that's on the road. They're probably going to make the Jones Causeway and then off the road. All right. Yeah. Then I go walk behind this big mm -hmm. one there. Tell me when I start. Okay. Let's ride. Right there. Oh, there it is, all down there. Yeah. Okay. It just looks, it looks like it's going to be hurting it. Yeah. My sense, <laughs> I don't have to do the tour anymore. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I walk with, with bare feet you in the sand. The Did you? Yes, yes. A lovely feeling. It was dead. <laughs> 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 